Hello and welcome to our channel, where we share with you some tips and tricks for traveling around the world. Today, we're going to talk about 15 things you should never do in the UK, one of the most popular destinations for tourists. So, let's get started. The British are very proud of their accent, and they don't appreciate foreigners trying to mimic it. They might find it amusing at first, but they'll soon get annoyed and think you're mocking them. There are also many different accents in the UK, depending on the region, and you might end up sounding like a caricature or a stereotype. Just speak in your own accent, and don't worry about sounding different. The British are used to hearing different accents, and they'll respect you more for being yourself. The UK uses a different type of plug and voltage than most other countries. The plug has three rectangular pins, and the voltage is 230 volts. If you want to use your electronic devices in the UK, you will need an adapter and a converter. Don't try to force your plug into the socket or use the wrong voltage, as you might damage your device or cause a fire. The United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland is the official full name of the country, and it consists of four nations – England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Each nation has its own identity, culture and flag, and calling them all England is a sure way to annoy the locals. Instead, use the correct name for each nation, or simply say the UK or Britain when referring to the whole country. Football is the most popular sport in the UK, and it's a source of pride and passion for many fans. However, don't make the mistake of calling it soccer, as this is an American term that the British find annoying and inaccurate. Football is the original name of the game and it's the only one that the British use. Soccer, on the other hand, is a shortened version of association football, which is one of the many codes of football that exist in the world. So if you want to talk about football in the UK, make sure to use the right word, or you'll risk offending the locals. Tipping is a tricky subject in the UK, as there are no fixed rules or expectations. Generally, Tipping is not mandatory, but it is appreciated as a gesture of gratitude for good service. The usual amount is 10% of the bill in restaurants, pubs and taxis, but you can round up to the nearest pound or leave some change if you prefer. However, don't tip if the service was poor or if the bill already includes a service charge. And don't tip in places where tipping is not expected, such as fast food outlets, coffee shops or supermarkets. Tea is more than just a drink in the UK, it's a way of life. The British drink about 165 million cups of tea every day, and they offer it to guests as a sign of hospitality and friendship. If someone offers you a cup of tea, don't refuse it, even if you don't like it or you're not thirsty. It's considered rude and ungrateful to turn down a cup of tea, and you might offend your host. Just accept it and sip it politely, or ask for a glass of water instead. Unlike some other cultures, where small talk is a way of breaking the ice and showing friendliness, the British tend to avoid it as much as possible. They consider it a waste of time and a sign of superficiality. They prefer to talk about more meaningful topics, such as politics, sports, or the weather. If you do engage in small talk, don't ask personal questions, such as how much someone earns, where they live, or if they have a partner. These are considered rude and intrusive by the British. In some cultures, it's common to greet someone with a kiss on the cheek, or even two or three. In the UK, however, this is not the norm and it might make the person you're greeting feel uncomfortable or invaded. The British are not very touchy-feely, and they value their personal space. A handshake, a nod, or a smile are usually enough to greet someone, unless you know them very well and they initiate the kiss. The UK is famous for its monarchy and its nobility, 
and many tourists are fascinated by the history, the glamour and the gossip surrounding them. However, not all British people share the same enthusiasm, and some might even be critical or indifferent to them. Don't assume that everyone in the UK loves the Queen, or that they know everything about the royal family. And don't be too starstruck if you happen to see a celebrity or a lord, as the British tend to be more discreet and reserved when it comes to fame and fortune. Continuing on the theme of royalty, let's address the importance of showing respect. The royal family is a source of pride and fascination for many British people, and they don't appreciate any mockery or criticism of them. Don't make fun of their names, appearances, scandals or roles. Don't question their relevance or importance. Don't compare them to celebrities or politicians. If you are not a fan of the monarchy, keep your opinions to yourself. Now that we've explored the royal etiquette, let's dive into dining norms, specifically regarding refills. In the UK, most restaurants and cafes don't offer free refills for drinks, unlike in some other countries. If you want more coffee, tea, soda or water, you have to pay for it. Don't ask for a refill or try to get one yourself. Don't be surprised or offended if you're charged for it. The weather in the UK is notoriously unpredictable and changeable, and it's often cold, wet and gloomy. However, the British are used to it, and they don't like to complain about it. They prefer to make jokes, sarcasm or irony about the weather, and they take it as a challenge and a source of pride. Don't complain about the weather, or you'll sound like a whiner and a moaner. Instead, try to adapt to it and bring an umbrella, a coat and a sense of humour. The UK has several flags, and each one has a different meaning and significance. The Union Jack is the national flag of the UK, and it's a combination of the flags of England, Scotland and Northern Ireland. The St George's Cross is the flag of England, and it's a red cross on a white background. The Saltire is the flag of Scotland, and it's a white cross on a blue background. The red dragon is the flag of Wales, and it's a red dragon on a green and white background. The St. Patrick's Saltire is the flag of Northern Ireland, and it's a red cross on a white background. Don't mix up the flags, or you'll show ignorance and disrespect for the culture and the history of the UK. A kilt is a traditional garment worn by men in Scotland and it's a symbol of their national identity and pride. It's not a costume or a joke, and it's not something that anyone can wear for fun or fashion. If you're not Scottish, don't wear a kilt, or you'll risk offending the locals and making a fool of yourself. The only exception is if you're invited to a formal event, such as a wedding or a ball, where a kilt is part of the dress code. In that case, make sure to wear it properly and respectfully and follow the etiquette rules. The King's Guard are the soldiers who guard the royal residences, such as Buckingham Palace, Windsor Castle or the Tower of London. They wear distinctive red uniforms and black hats, and they stand still and silent for hours. They are not there for entertainment, and they are not allowed to interact with the public. Don't touch the King's Guard, or try to make them laugh, smile, or talk. They are trained to ignore any distractions, and they might react harshly if you annoy them, or threaten them. Respect their duty and their professionalism, and keep a safe distance from them. That's all for today on the essential things to keep in mind when navigating the cultural landscape of the UK. These guidelines are designed to enhance your cultural understanding and ensure a respectful and enjoyable experience during your visit. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more travel tips and insights on our channel.